Hey, what's up guys? Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I don't know what time it is for you guys, but for me, it's the morning time, and we got a lot of stuff planned for the M3 today. First things first, we got this bumper that I painted last episode. It's been sitting and curing for a week. Uh, it's really dusty right now, as you can see, but all that needs to be done to this is it needs to be wet sanded and buffed and polished. Which brings me to everything you see laying right here. First off, I picked up this polisher from uh, a Walmart. Uh, this, um, this bumper is probably the only thing I'm going to use this for, and then I might return it because it was kind of expensive for what it is. I got these uh, intake ducts that were completely missing from my car when I bought it. I got these fender liners, which again were completely missing my, from my car. I picked up this thing from my uh, from my boy George at M Parts Worldwide. He gave it to me for free because it's a little cheap part, but it's something that I need. And mine's completely blown apart on this thing. I got a steering rack boot because mine, again, completely blown apart. I got some things from Walmart, uh, you know, to buff the front bumper out. And then this is going to be the nicest thing that I'm putting on today. Or not the nicest, but the, the thing I'm most excited about. Is this Turner Motorsport full aluminum belly pan for the E92 M3. It's amazing quality. These things are really light. Like I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if these aluminum pieces weigh the same as some of the felt pieces because it's just extremely light. You got these massive reinforcements. You know, if you take a hit from the bottom, it, it's not doing nothing. Um, but yeah, the whole thing's aluminum and it's painted a crinkle black and it looks really nice and it's OEM fitment so it just bolts right up. The only thing you got to add is these reinforcements which again are really easy to do. I'll show you guys um, but I will be doing a full DIY on how to install this if anybody wants to do one themselves. So I've had all that stuff that I just showed you laying around for quite a while, but I wasn't able to put it on the car until this front bumper was finished because Again, the bumper I have on my car is aftermarket, so some of the things may line up with modification, but I'm not trying to do those modifications. And then when I install this bumper, I gotta undo those modifications or do even more modifications. So, I was just waiting till this bumper was finished. So the first thing we gotta do um, in order to put those parts on that I have laying over there is install this front bumper. And there we have it. Bumper looks really good, guys. Fitment is exactly how I wanted it. Uh, it's the best I can get it, but it looks good. Paint matches really well, which is something I was a little scared about. It looks a little off on camera, but that's just because uh, the paint on the car is really nice and uh, like glossy, and then the paint on here is really dusty, and it needs to be wet sanded and buffed because there's a lot of orange peel. So that's what we're gonna be doing, obviously, a little later in the episode. But uh, next is I'm gonna throw some fender liners in, the intake ducts, uh, just we're gonna keep going at it. All right, so we've done a lot so far already. I took the wheels off, got the new fender liners in, looking good, everything's bolted up it should, the way it should. Same with the other side. You guys also saw me go underneath the car and replace this tie rod boot. So that's all done, everything's fastened up. Next thing we gotta do is install this Turner Motorsport belly pan. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing a full DIY pretty much on how to install this uh, splash tray. And the first thing you gotta do is crawl underneath the vehicle like I am now, and you can see those that big hole and small hole. And you're gonna take these small parts that's included in the kit. It's the smallest screws that the kit comes with. There's only two of them. And it's uh, these metal uh, threaded bracket things. You're gonna take one bracket, and you're gonna use either a magnet of some sort, I'm gonna be using a magnet, and you're just gonna try and fish it up in that hole as best you can. I know it's a little hard to see, but you can see I got mine in with uh, the short nut, 
that one's in, and that one's in. So now we can grab our support braces and go ahead and install those. So before you guys go ahead and throw these up, there is one thing that you need to keep in mind. They are different. Uh, obviously there's a left side and a right side and they have to go on a certain way. So uh, as you can see, I have these standing straight up, but you can see that that left bracket, the that end bracket kind of goes off to the left and this right bracket kind of goes off to the right. Now the way they mount onto the car is exactly how I ha have them here. So you want them to go out. So the uh, driver side goes out towards the driver side to the left and the passenger side goes out to the right. Um, if this confuses you, I would suggest holding these up to your skid pan just so you can like be sure, but they go away from each other. Just be sure of that. And then to stick them up, you just you put these up and that angle iron piece, that 90 degree piece goes towards the front of the car. Just like that, it's a little blurry. But, and then you could see the, uh, I gotta do a little bit of finagling, but that, that bolt hole lines right up. All right, so I got the two brackets in. Here's the one, and then there's the other one, you could see it. Now that we have the brackets on, next thing we could actually throw up is the main shield itself. There's really nothing I have to explain for this main shield. Uh, it's literally just slide it up there, you know, wiggle it in if it's not going in, and put the bolts in. All right guys, she's all up. Turner Motorsports says that that should only take 30 minutes. And that, me, it took me like an hour, hour and a half. Uh, I had a lot of fitment issues, but it's all together now and it's complete and I'm really happy with it. Here's what it looks like from the front of the car. You can see the actual pan. If you were to be able to, if you were to like actually lay on the ground and look at it, my car's in the air right now, that's why you can see it easy. But yeah, Turner Motorsport aluminum belly pan is up. So, next thing we got to do is wet sand and polish that front bumper, which I will do at a later date because I have to be somewhere right now. So, I'll see you guys when that date is. All right, guys, here we are. I already went ahead and I taped a bunch of things off that I don't want to hit with the sandpaper. I got a little foam block that's, you know, it's bendy but it's also rigid. I got 2000 grit, 1000 grit, and then I also got these uh, 3000 grit DA pads. Um, I'm going to be doing everything by hand. I'm just going to wrap the sandpaper around this rigid block and I'm going to do everything, you know, as as cautiously as I can because if I if I go through the clear too much then I got to re-clear coat the entire bumper and I don't want to have to do that. I got some warm soapy water here because when you're wet sanding you want to make sure you keep everything nice and wet. Um, yeah that's about it so yeah I'm gonna jump right into it. All right guys, it's a new day and last night I did end up finishing uh, the sanding and the buffing of my front bumper. It did come out really good, uh, better than it was before, but it does have a lot of issues and that's uh, my fault. So in a couple areas, I kind of messed up the clear coat. You could see right there, uh, I chipped the clear there. Um, taking this tow hook cover out, I chipped the paint completely there. Um, so that's down to the old silver color of the bumper. There's a lot of areas where I didn't do a great job buffing. I did a great job sanding. You can see like how it's like hazy right here. I um, mean, it's really smooth, but my buffer just couldn't get into all the areas. This is just salt. They salted the roads last night because uh, of the snow. But you can see it really well here. You know, it's hazy. Uh, again, my buffer couldn't fit in a lot of areas. 
Um, so I need to figure out what to do on that aspect. But as far as what I wanted to do, like the main reason, the main reason why I wanted to wet sand and buff the front bumper is because there was a lot of contaminants and impurities in the clear coat. So when you would rub your hand on it, you would very, very noticeably feel a very gritty uh, paint job. And I didn't like that, you know? This entire car was pretty well taken care of as far as the paint. So when you touch the paint, it's really, really, really smooth. Um, so I wanted the front bumper to match that. Um, now, honestly, the front bumper is smoother than the rest of the car, but overall, I'm happy with it. So, as far as these little issues, I do need to go back and I do need to uh, uh, get a buffer or hand polish those areas out, which I'll probably do by hand. Um, but overall, it came out okay and I'm happy with it. Um, but I do plan on wrapping the car eventually. You guys know from my last build, my 328, which is sadly sitting right here. <laughs> um, that it was out there, it was wild, it was a crazy color, and I definitely have a crazy color planned for this one. Eventually, you know, I, I really wanna change it up like once a year or once a season, uh, which is pretty much the same thing. But I have a crazy color in mind is what I'm trying to say. So if the bumper didn't come out as good as I wanted it to, it's not the end of the world. I am gonna be wrapping the car anyway. But now I'm happy that I have a really smooth base to install the wrap on. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy uh, from that aspect of it. Um, but overall, it came out really good. I did what I said I was going to do. I was going to wet sand the bumper and buff it out so that I would get rid of the impurities in the clear coat, which I did. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, next video, we do have exhaust for this car. It's nothing too crazy, but also it sounds really good. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have anything to say, shoot me a comment. I always respond to my comments. Please subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up. All right, guys, peace out and I'll see you in the next one.